Mark Feldman, Super Training Gym, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. Today we're at Gold's Gym, the mecca of bodybuilding, and I ran into bodybuilding <laughs> extraordinaire Amanda Bucci, and I also got my bro Ham here with me today. What up? We're going to ask some, Amanda some, some sweaty pits today. random questions. What's going Good on here? Good stuff. Right. You got me after the workout, oh. after I did the, yeah. You killed it though. Is it complicated getting ready for the gym, being a girl? Like Sometimes, all this stuff going on? It depends on who I think I'm going to run into. The and bra, I try the to. sports bra, the... <laughs> I guess it's like an extra step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Extra yeah, couple extra things step. to think about on your mm -hmm. way extra to the step. gym. You have to sure. jump off the bed to get into those pants. Right? Yes. There's got to be some oh. technique to that. You could film that. <laughs> so there's, <laughs> there's so many people uh, on Instagram and so many people on social media uh, trying to, I guess, buy a little piece of everybody's time. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to get attention. And to have, for yourself, how have you been able to build up? Because I think when I first met you, I think when you first came to super training, you might have had 80,000 or like 100,000 maybe. And now I can't even keep track. I think you're <laughs> probably closer to half a million. Is that right? On Instagram, yeah. And then YouTube's at like almost 200 yeah. or so. So. So how has uh, some of that come to be? I mean, I know sometimes it's content, sometimes it's people just kind of relating to you, but mm. you know, some, something specific that you're doing or, or is there a certain thing that you're trying to stick to? Yeah, um, I think for me, the way that I kind of grew my audience has been a couple of different things. I didn't just stay in one um, like niche audience, I guess you could say, and that was kind of an accident. Um, I started off as a bikini competitor. I've done eight bikini competitions, and this past year I did my first powerlifting meet. So I kind of felt yeah. a little bit like in in the company at Super Training Gym. So yeah. I felt good about that. That was fun. Um, you came up. Yeah, yeah. And I was able to be on Barbell Brigade's YouTube channel, and I'm a sponsored athlete with them now. So I I kind of got into a different audience there. I think she kind of said she stole my views <laughs> and my subscribers. They're like, she's a lot better looking than Mark. I'm gonna start following her. That's I mean, happens. yeah, I mean, anytime you kind of get exposure from somebody right. else's audience and people are like, oh, that makes sense. And I want to follow that too, because it kind of makes sense with like the right audience yes. that you get placed in front of. And then now I've been focusing a lot more on just general health and wellness. I'm focusing on mindset stuff. I'm like breaking into the entrepreneurial space. I have my own podcast. So there's been a lot of like new things that I've challenged myself yeah. to do. And I think a lot of people kind of just came from Yeah, I saw you places. started a podcast and then uh, what are some other things you're doing to monetize uh, your lifestyle, I guess? Yeah, so um, what I'm doing, I currently am running a mentorship program for social media growth, which yeah. is really, really fun. It's really focused on um, teaching people. A lot of people have no idea how to build an audience, grow an audience, but not only that, how to monetize it and then how to have your unique voice be shared without doing a bunch of like stupid gimmicky like social media hacks and crap like that. Um, I'm so against a lot of that stuff that people were like, ooh, how do you like get this? Or maybe, what's like the uh, next gimmick? Do you maybe coach some of the ladies uh, occasionally, A, to possibly sexualize something, or B, mm. to not sexualize something? I don't coach people to sexualize things. <laughs> I, I like talk about that. Um, Is it something you mentioned you might maybe like, hey, like if you do too much of that, like it's not a great, or you just kind of let them up to their I explain that own. it's like, whatever you're trying to do, if you're trying to be a coach to females for fitness, um, not a lot of females are going to be interested in following a certain type of look on social media. And if you're like trying to think about like who's your ideal audience, who's your ideal client, who do you want to connect with? Is it guys that want to like your photos or is it like um, girls that you want to either coach and be a mentor to or be, and be their friend? Right. So it kind of, you have to think about like why do you want to use it? Because there's obviously so many things you can do to get popular and like get likes and followers, right. but that doesn't always equate to like being able to monetize yourself. Right. Yeah, you can look sexy, but then maybe you're not selling any programming or selling right. any of the things that you're talking about. Who yeah, are the people yeah. that you're mentoring and how do they get in contact with you? How do they find you? Uh, usually most people, um, so for the program itself, like there's an application process and I'm really looking for people that are really passionate about growing a business and growing a band, brand. Um, something that I did. It doesn't matter what it is or is it fitness? It's mainly? fitness focused because my audience is fitness That's focused. Here, yeah. um, it might branch out to not, because I mean business advice can kind of apply to almost any kind of niche, but my audience is that right now. Um, but the people that I want to coach are the people that I am most 
like relating to because for me I, uh, I have a nursing degree almost became a nurse I decided to take this whole social media influencer um, entrepreneur course instead and it worked out so well for me and I just I'm so, so this happy. is a full time it's a full time job mm. for you. This is all you do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of amazing, right? That was yeah. a big change from going in a you would have been working probably 12, 16 hour shifts at least, right? Right, right, right. In nursing, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, That's it wasn't a completely different. It wasn't lifestyle. like a immediate thing either. I was just like, I'm going to I was doing fitness coaching for a bit, um, and just fitness coaching and I was doing it on my in my senior year of college nursing school. And it was making me just as much as I would have as a nurse going into my first job. So I was like, there's so much opportunity here. And Don't get a job, kids. <laughs> I know. That's like the worst thing. And don't thing go to school because okay. you went to school. You have, you have three it's people here. We've all been to school. Oh, sorry. And none of us have jobs, basically. Like, Clearly. Like job jobs, right? Yeah. I don't consider what I do a job. I don't think you consider that he does a job. Not really. No, I love it too much. For him, it's, it's like an yeah. session. It's crazy. You know, every second of every day, we talk to him. How, how do you... Uh, how do you work on yourself? How do you work on Amanda? You know, because you you know you plowing forward and you're working hard and you're thinking, oh, I gotta write this. I need to do a campaign for this thing or I need to set things up for that. There's a lot of things going on, right? So how do you work on yourself? Uh, I use Google calendars. If you don't use it, you should try to use it. It's like my number one favorite yeah. calendar uh, thing. So if it's not in there, it does not happen. Like if we didn't have Mark Bell and Chris <laughs> Bell conversation today, it just didn't exist. I'm just kidding, but uh, calendar. And I also, I read a lot and I listen to a lot of podcasts. So I get a lot of ideas from podcasts, a lot of like, you know, things that you would never really think about until you listen to someone else who has gone through with themselves and you kind of just get this switch flipped in your mind and you realize the things you never realized before. And that's where I've got a lot of my, um, I guess just like confidence to do what I want to do because hearing other people's stories and doing what they want to do themselves too. So reading a lot, podcasting and calendar. Are you an organized person or a creative person? Ooh, a little bit. So my room and my car are really unorganized, <laughs> but my business is really organized. <laughs> I guess I pick my battles. Yeah, um, I, yeah, your I think I'm like that. Your car's got a couple of shaker cups in there. Oh. What about the top three books that you've read recently mm. or ever that um, have inspired you through your fitness journey? That's a good one. Um, the one I read recently was Grant Cardone's Be Obsessed or Be Average. I read it the whole way through. It was really good. He's a cutthroat guy, but you can apply a lot of that like cutthroatness to yourself. And you can like talk to yourself in a way that reminds yourself that you are valuable and you can push forward regardless of your mental blocks. And that was just an amazing What was book. his name again? Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone, okay. Grant Cardone. And the second one? Uh, second one is The One Thing, and it was the book that changed my life in terms of saying no to nursing and saying yes to the notch job. Cool. And I was like reading that in the middle of that decision, and I was like, oh my god, it clicked. I have one thing that I need to be focusing on instead of just two half-assed. And then third one, I've been reading a book called Radical Candor, and Brian, my boyfriend, got it for me for my birthday, and it's all about... Um, when you're speaking to people and you want to criticize them, doing it in a way that cares about them personally but challenges them directly. Exactly. So you're not being an asshole, basically. I need that. Yeah, it's a really good book. <laughs> I think good I need book. all three of those. Yeah. Like so reading does. and podcasts are some of the places that you're drawing some of the inspiration from. Mm, a ton. What a ton. about in your like immediate life, uh, mom or dad, anybody uh, that kind of... Uh, you know, you, you follow a lot of the principles or things they've said when you were a kid or something like that? Yeah, my mom, um, my mom raised me as a single mom and she is, yeah, she's like my number I one I think everybody's got like something, like mm. someone made fun of them too much, someone beat them up too much, or their dad did this, or something happened. There's always, always you know, there's something always in like the childhood. something that give you a little bit of extra oomph, right? Yeah, yeah. The mom, for sure, she gave me the extra oomph, she continues to give me the extra oomph. I actually, she like does work for me. She does like bookkeeping for me and oh, stuff. Awesome. She has my back like a thousand percent. She's always on top of everything for me. And she's like, you need to do this. And like, now I'm looking at this and like, I don't want anything for this. I just want to make sure you're okay. And she's just um, such an inspiration to me in terms of like being an independent woman and doing everything I possibly can to make my dreams come true. And I know it's like really, really, really cheesy, but it just it's it kind of just okay. like, yeah, yeah. So the, the dream is to, uh, you know, get jacked, move to California, become a fitness star, blah, blah, right? You know, <laughs> we, we, you know, we've moved out. How have you found it on the West Coast and how is it different from the East Coast? Oh, I and love the West Coast. The East Coast, West Coast battle. Yeah, yeah. Continues. It's on. <laughs> 
I mean, I think we all have our own opinions about this, but when I, I think your opinion about where you live depends on what happens to you, where you live when yeah. you live in those places. Yeah. So it's not necessarily you about the place it itself. Yourself a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's not about the place itself. Like Rhode Island's a beautiful state. There are beautiful people there. Um, but for me, I felt really enclosed in a box there, and I felt like the environment I was in was in a really closed box. And then when I got here, all it was the same people. Basically, yeah, what you're saying. So it's same people, same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got out here for the first time, I was like. What am I? What have I been missing? Yeah, you can go anywhere, yeah. any day. And people here, especially in like Los Angeles, are really, really, really um, diverse, and they're all doing their own thing. Like any Uber driver you talk to, I'm like, so what do you do besides Uber? Yeah, it's crazy, right? And they're all like You'll some sort of actor or writer or whatever, and it's just like really inspiring because everyone's just hustling here. That's good. There's a saying that says, "He who seeketh findeth," and it sounds like you found your passion, found what you love to do. What would you say uh, to some of the audience members out there? Maybe they're struggling to get on the diet that they need to go on or maybe they're struggling to get started with some lifting or maybe they're struggling to get you know do something business wise what would be your advice to just say hey like here's what you got to do you got to get started and yeah head in the um, right direction this way honestly i think like the biggest thing that's scary for people is feeling like they don't have all of the right tools in order to get started like they don't know this and they don't know that and my advice is really like what is step number one like if you can really just break it down into like what is step number one and then do step one and then just like take a look at yourself and be like oh I did step one okay what's next step two instead of thinking about this whole like really far away goal that like I have to lose 50 pounds or I have to lose like lose one pound get there and then lose two and then lose five and then lose like it'll just continue to go and then you have to like build your own confidence up in yourself before you can feel confident like you have to do the little things first in order to kind of feel confident like if you don't feel like that right now it's okay um, but you have to like take step one in order to get there you got to build some momentum right mm. strength is never a weakness we're out of here see you later oh I missed that <laughs>